I did build a computer recently, but I made a bad choice with the motherboard on that, even though I spent a very long time deciding on what one to get. It didn't have the integrated Thunderbolt, and I used the add-on card Asus Thunderbolt EX4, I think, something like that. It's been very unreliable, and some devices, like my HDMI capture card, don't seem to work when connected to Thunderbolt. So I decided we'll build a new computer, and this time we'll get a motherboard that does have the integrated Thunderbolt on it, and we'll hope that that works reliably. Since 13th Gen was released recently, I thought we might as well have a go on that as well. They've changed the packaging, it's a lot more compact now than it was before. So there's very few motherboards that have integrated Thunderbolt. Yeah, after a lot of searching I've decided on this one. It comes in a pretty nice box. And interesting, they don't seem to believe in anti-static bags or anything, it's just there. I got a low profile cooler. But I'm wondering if there's going to be a problem, because this is very tall. We'll have to check that, and yeah, that might be a bit disappointing if that doesn't fit. I don't know what we'll do then, we'll work that out. So get mainboard, it's got yeah, quite a lot of heat sinks and things on it. Interesting, there's a button to release the graphics card, that will be, be useful. M2 slots there. Three PCI, they're reasonably well spaced, which is good, unlike that other board. And on the back panel there, we can see we got two Thunderbolt ports. So we'll be trying those out, that's the most important thing. There's an additional PCIe power connector there, which means that the front USB-C can do power delivery. I guess we'll try that out too. It's under here, a whole bunch of extra stuff. You get a card. Okay, scan the QR code to get a surprise message. There's a USB drive, which I think has uh, the manuals and things. It seems to be USB 3. Plug in random USB drives that you find lying around. That's always a good idea. Oh, it comes up as a CD-ROM drive. Huh, I guess that means you can't use it for other stuff. And then 24 gigs? I guess it's a 32 gig drive that has a fixed CD-ROM on it. That's interesting. Got all sorts of software and things. Okay, so there's this card here, which I think that gives you more M2 slots. Wow, it's really heavy. A Hyper M2 card. I believe what that does is it means you can plug that into a PCIe 5 PCI slot and turn on bifurcation. So it will turn into two, four slots, I guess. Turn your PCI into two 4 times slots. Two M2 slots so you can get PCIe 5 support on your yeah, M2 drives. Though I don't think you can get drives at that speed yet. And here, aerials. Quite a lot of the little doofies that you use for attaching your M2s. Some SATA cables. Extra thermal interface pad that's been squashed. And more little thingies. Fan for your RAM bracket. Another fan holder thing. LED or fan LED data cable, I think. So that's good. I think we've got out everything we need for now. Let's take this apart and see what's going on inside it. Got a very solid heatsink on the top. I thought we were building a computer, not taking random things apart. Oh well. Oh, well, there you go. It's got various power supply stuff on it. I guess that's just a 3.3 volt power supply from the 12 volts. And uh, maybe it's got a SATA controller on it. Would that be something that they would do so that you can use the crappier drives. They bring out the LEDs, that's nice. You can see them from the back. Yeah, I don't know what that extra chip would be. ICSLO452. Okay, well apparently that is a PCIe zero delay buffer. I wonder if that's something to do with the splitting or the clock distribution for the two devices. This is a useful thing because it means 
you got a PCI 8 times to 2 PCI 4 times splitter and you can then use that things like this to create other interesting devices with either U2 or PCIe anyway maybe we'll play with that at some point and or maybe we'll forget about it and find other interesting things to do I guess I've sized it all right so that this properly squashes on your drives without destroying them once it's tightened up don't get this out of the box I think there's some kind of display there hmm, interesting sheet of stuff underneath it Collizone mm, is that aesthetic dissipative material? it doesn't look like it oh, there's a plate over the bottom side of the board means that the case is going to have to have quite thick standoffs in it okay that's just regulatory stuff for the the Wi-Fi okay I guess we'll put the processor in although yeah I need to see if the the fan is going to fit because otherwise there's probably not much point in going further oh well we might have just swapped the two between the 12th gen system and this one that would be a bit annoying okay will this thing fit on the motherboard it doesn't seem to have any thermal paste maybe you have to apply that yourself it looks like it will just fit. Well, that's good. That's very lucky. Great. Okay, we're gonna stick the CPU into this. Comes in the same kind of nice looking box. Although this time it's silver colored, not gold. And there's some Manuel. Got some RAM here. Which is supposedly compatible, according to the, the website. There was more stuff hiding in the box underneath this keychain and a whole bunch of manuals. That's what I thought we were missing. I thought they wanted you just to look on the internet to find it, but there you go. They do exist. We'll install the CPU. And then some RAM. into the slots indicated, then cooler this is a very heavy board like that, because we want it to go this way then we get some kind of screwing things Thing called low noise adapter does that mean it it's got some parts in there that will slow down the fan they give you the the pattern two millimeter dots four in the corners and a three to four millimeter dot in the center now we have to we'll prepare this first we have to take the fan out hopefully that's a good one ready to go on like that not going to interfere with anything. All right, we use the paste. It's near the corners. Okay, that's way too much. Move that into the center. Make a massive mess of it. Awesome, because it, yeah, it just comes blasting out when you squeeze it. Maybe I should have done the big dot first. Yeah, I can feel it spreading around. Yeah, the, the risk will be trapping air bubbles. In. Great, got that screwed down, and now we put the fan back on. I'm gonna put the wire underneath it so it stays out of the way. But yeah, that's fairly tidy. Metal surrounds on the power connectors. Oh, and there's heat pipes in that heatsink. Oh, I guess that's why it doesn't need anti-static because it's got this plate on the bottom. All right, let's peel this stuff off. Since we're here, that will generate a lot of nice static charge. Oh, okay. Oh, Great. All the stuff peeled off. If we look at the I.O. arrangement there, they didn't give you a display port. Disappointing. Just a HDMI 
but then of course you can use the Thunderbolt outputs for video if necessary. There's no 20 gigabits USBs on here, but the front the front USB-C can handle that if necessary. Pretty good amount of USBs. So we'll look at the power supply and then we'll look at turning it on. It got to this power supply, although I actually got it for the other computer because the one is too big. So they'll be swapped around, I think. Uh, but I wanted to try this out because it's interesting. It's nice and small. And I think the cables on this one are a lot nicer. Look at that, it comes in a little packet. So tiny. You get a bracket so you can mount it in the standard ATX mounting and some other bits and pieces. And we'll look at the cables. The EPS 12 volt type connectors. The motherboard. And then we've got the PCIe connectors, two of those, and then some SATA and other drive power connectors. No floppy drive connector. Oh well. Ah, and annoyingly these are all those type, which is not very nice when you want to have a stack of drives. You really need the a bunch of these end ones. That's a little bit disappointing. These wires are fairly nice though quite flexible, quite short, I suppose because this is meant for small case builds. This is good. This is a lot better than the, what is the other brand, Corsair, Corsair, Corsair brand, because they put extremely horrible sleeving over everything, which makes it ugly and makes it very hard to manage, because you cannot bend this, and the problem is as we've seen with the new RTX cards, when you bend the wire close to the connector, they don't make a very good connection and then they burn and catch on fire. So this here is a lot nicer because you can plug it into your card, whatever, and then bend the cable nicely while keeping the crimp pins in the connector perfectly straight so they stay connecting properly. Can't do that with this, it's just disgusting. The only way you can bend it is up here and by then it's too tall for the case with your graphics card. It's a very poor design. What I wanted to do is test do these cables or are these cables compatible with the uh, Cosia ones? Are they using the same thing? Oh it's a bit dodgy how those swap over isn't it? Not too bad. So how have they wired this? I also have a much older cos here, cos here, cos here, a PCIe one from an older power supply. And I was wondering, will these be all compatible with each other? We see at the power supply end, it's whether or not they've used the same keying, because yeah, they, they've changed that stuff. See, that won't connect. The Corsair ones are incompatible with each other. See, that's got two rounded ones on the top row, whereas that only has one rounded one at each end, so that won't connect. But this Fantex one, it looks like it would work. PCIe. And then they've wired this, so the top row here, with next to the clip, goes along and ends up at the top row next to the clip. So is that the same as this? Looks like it. Well that's quite encouraging. So that means this older Cosia one should be compatible with this Fantex power supply. Ah, uh, but it's blocked by them only having a center notch for the keying the clip. Also I think this, this shape of these have changed a bit because that's a lot it's a very loose feeling compared to these. Anyway, yeah, don't mix and match your stuff without very carefully checking first that 
it's going to work. That is a mess. That stuff there that you can't bend properly. So I'd stay away from that in the future if I remember and can make the choice. So let's hook this up. Hmm, how does that work? Look, those two are joined together there, but it's on the wrong side. That doesn't make sense, does it? But that has to peel apart to go into there. That's a bit rough. And then to connect up this motherboard, we need to use both of the EPS 12 volt connectors. It's very annoying that they came up with this, the PCIe standard for power after the EPS 12V. And it's the same thing, but they've just reversed the 12 volts in the ground over. Why didn't they just keep it the same as the ATX 12V standard and EPS standard? That's a very silly thing to have done. It would have made the power supplies a lot easier. Okay, I think that's all of the stuff that we're going to need for now. We'll bring the board in and join it up. Now you have to be careful when routing this stuff to get the lay of the cables nice. So we've got that one. And then we got that extra um, 12 volts for the, they say it's for the, the power delivery for the USB, but it also says in the manual that it's for the giving extra power for your PCI slots, so yeah, I guess it does both. And these wires do feel quite nice. It's just the issue because they're in a ribbon configuration, they can be a bit uncooperative for bending if you have them twisted in a weird way, but once they're laying nicely, they will twist nicely. Okay, we'll boot this up for the first time soon. So we put the CPU with the graphics built in, and we'll bring in the good power meter thing that we used last time, so we can see what the power consumption is doing. Supposedly this is a nice quiet power supply that won't turn on the fan until the load gets fairly high. And got a good mouse. I think we're ready to go for first boot. We're using this. Ah, look at that. There's a display there. Oh, was it just an LED display? I thought that was like an actual screen that you customize stuff on. But maybe it's just LEDs behind a panel. Yeah, that's a bit disappointing. I thought it was going to be a fancy display that you could program stuff onto. Okay, let's start. We'll push start. And we can see the boot code. And remember last time it took a very long time to start on the first boot. Oh, look at that. We've got something there. Okay, new CPU installed. Press F1 to run setup. So this is what we get in the bath. Oh, it's got a weird pointer. So we'll spend some time changing these things around. Thunderbolt, good, that's all enabled. Thunderbolt boot support, whoa, this is exciting, we need to try this. Ah, you know, I was wondering, what if, can we add the Thunderbolt card to this as well? More Thunderbolts? Anyway, this is very exciting, Thunderbolt boot support, so we need to test that out. Oh, so it has a TPM, that's one thing, I thought, that, I thought these here were the TPM header and I bought one to plug in there, but... That's some other thing, it's not mentioned anywhere in the manual, so I guess it's built in. I suppose that makes sense. That was a bit of a waste of buying one, anyway. It's all pretty normal stuff. Biases in there yet. APM. I'm gonna turn off the, the Wi-Fi, as if we can do that. Because I don't need those. And I want that off. I wonder if we can see what's going on. Wow, there's so much stuff in there. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, save, changes, reset. There's no boot device. We have this. A, it's a copy of the drive we used last time. Yeah, since that drive got reused, so I mirrored it over. We'll just wait for this to settle itself down. Yes, that power supply is pretty noisy when the fan is running at full bore. 
We need to connect this thing up so we can check the power modes of the USB port. I don't know which way around to plug that thing in. That's a really weird connector. Okay, it just goes to BIOS because there's nothing there. Let's connect this drive up to it and... Ah, look, now we get to see this stuff because we turned off the logo. Okay, we're booting off this random cheap AliExpress SSD that I got just to see what they will be like. Seems okay, the performance of it is pretty fast in benchmarking. It might need to reboot a few times, no? Oh, look at that, we're already ready to go, just like that. Here is a computer. That was easy. Now I have to make this full screen so we can actually read this stuff. So we've got an i9 Raptor Lake, 125 watt TDP. I don't think there's any BIOS updates for this yet. It's 32 gigs of RAM. Got 64 gigs, but that's in the other system at the moment. Alright, so we're gonna try do this a bench. Okay, so that's 16914. Don't know if that's good or not. Okay, so it's pretty good. Uh, compared to the no, the i9-12900KS, that benchmark score was 12,047. Whereas this one is 16,914, so it's a fair bit better. I'm going to plug a network into this and we'll just see if it gets any updates. Presumably the network will work. Let's open Device Manager, let's see, ah oh, yes, so it's not quite plugged and played, is it? Uh, well, I've got the USB stick here, I can plug that in and play that. Oh, we should get to go to the website though, yeah, we, it would be better off going to the website to get drivers. Of course we will. Uh, this is the wrong one now, because this is the, oh, the website's a bit weird. Ah, uh, maybe the network... Is that right? Would the network be not installed? Because it's different? Probably one of those. Yeah, look at that there. Ah, that's interesting. It must have a different network controller. Guess we'll use the, the USB drive after all to uh, update the network driver. LAN. Should be that, shouldn't it? We'll just put it on LAN okay good okay so this should have a network connection now motherboards my outlook settings are out of date alright if there's any bass updates out yet I think we're still on the initial one are we? I don't know there's another one improve the system performance I guess we should do that uh, yeah, we got it. The video's probably done because, well, we set up the computer. I don't know what else we need to do. Except what we need to do is, well, we'll update the BIOS and then we're going to try booting from Thunderbolt and maybe doing some benchmarking. So I've got a couple of devices here that we can test out. Got this fairly good Samsung drive, that's a four, PCI 4 drive. So we'll put that into a Thunderbolt enclosure and see if we can boot it. And I've also got this other Samsung drive, which is another PCIe 4 drive. I don't want to boot this because it's got the operating system that I want to use in another system already installed on it. And the one in that system will come into here, so this can become a server. And But what we need to do is join both of these up by Thunderbolt and then test the performance, because it should be good, because we've got proper built into the CPU Thunderbolt ports now. I've got this thing, this is a Titan Ridge Thunderbolt controller in there and we'll give that a go with the 980 Pro Drive and then some various adapters. We need to join this drive up. Look at that, that's so good. 30 watts power consumption. So we download this BIOS update and We'll extract it and run that rename a thing. Now, does that mean we can put this onto the the USB drive that they gave us with the motherboard? Which is this. And uh, while we're here, let's just install the Thunderbolt drivers since that's a good thing. 
that we're going to need. I suppose we need to install heaps of other stuff. I wonder if that armory crate is. Wouldn't that get all the drivers for us and sort itself out? Let's see. While we're doing that, oops. Uh, we can install the Thunderbolt driver ourselves. Oh, do you think you need to run install.bat? I suppose they'll take care of that for us. Now, this thing, it doesn't seem to... Anyway, we'll just do that. Presumably the Thunderbolt is installed now. Anyway, there is a special USB slot called BIOS. So, does that mean we need to plug the USB drive into that one to do the BIOS install? I need to move that so I can see this. So if we get rid of that... And I'm thinking, let's plug it into the BIOS USB socket and see what that does. I think it changes anything. But it's probably more accessible to the, the BIOS. <laughs> Seems happy. Thunderbolt 4 controller two ports. Now what we should see with this is that we can connect um, two drives and saturate them both but they won't be sharing the bandwidth. That's the goal is yeah, normally on Thunderbolt well on the add-in cards and older systems where they had a separate Thunderbolt controller it was just sharing four lanes of PCI to one Thunderbolt controller with two ports so you couldn't actually achieve the maximum bandwidth per port but now that the Thunderbolt controller is in the CPU you should be able to get full bandwidth out of each port at the same time so we'll prove that we already did that on another video in that 11th gen system let's do the BIOS update and that way we can redo all the changes in the BIOS again I don't think that's doing anything is it now that we're on the internet we'll have to just go through all the drivers and get them I was thinking it would be quite similar to the 12th gen motherboard but I guess it's not we got a Thunderbolt toast component the toast of a Thunderbolt okay we'll reboot and do the BIOS install Let me just check we did put that on didn't we yes that cap thing is there does that mean we can press a button on the motherboard? Ah, uh, I was pressing F1, not F2. Okay. I uh, yeah, we should pull that drive out because then we can yeah, just go and do it. Anyway, I've mounted this up so we can test booting that. Okay, so that should be under tools, is it? E Z flash. Ah, uh, yeah. So you can put that. You can make that flex key. Is it that one there? The the other button. Anyway, let's go do this. Uh, we're not in BitLocker with these, so that's okay. And now we'll just wait a really long time. Uh, yeah, let's do that. Oh, does it tell you the the progress on that screen? I think that's what it's doing. Maybe it's gone to 51. Just, hmm, it's going pretty hard on the power consumption. We'll just have to wait for this to finish. Okay, it's done a reboot, and now it's doing this thing. So, yeah, it looks like it's done, and then there's more. So we'll wait for that. I guess that's done now, and then we'll actually go into the bus, and then I'll have to reset all the things that we set before, again, and then we can carry on. Yeah, then we'll try and boot this, this drive. This does have Windows on it already as well. It's probably going to get formatted and maybe made into the system drive for this. I'm not sure, changing my mind of what I want. Right, the BIOS has been set up again. Let's try booting the Thunderbolt device. We plug it into the first Thunderbolt header, and then we'll connect this thing up. And then we'll get this to reboot, and we'll see what it does. If we're lucky, we should see the lights flashing there. Oh look, it found it, it says there, look, Thunderbolt. Oh, I think it's just rebooting, isn't it? Maybe, I don't know, look, it's doing it. So I had to do another reboot for some reason? Wow, maybe, well, we'll see. Look at that, we've booted off a Thunderbolt drive. It says your pin is no longer available. Huh, that's a shame, isn't it? 
Can't use my good ass pin. My poor pin. Ah, uh, yeah, we're gonna have to do this just a moment thing for ages. And we can't because there's no internet because it doesn't have drivers. Yeah, that's the problem with... I don't know why latest versions of Windows don't have drivers for and the ethernet stuff being around the block. Anyway, I know how to fix that. You just grab a USB ethernet device, plug it in, connects to the internet, and then it's all good. Like this guy. Ethernet, and pretty much immediately as you connect that, that little icon in the corner will change to internet, and then it'll be all good. Well, it did the other day when I was doing something. Oh, maybe it's temperature that it's showing. Is that showing the CPU temperature or some other temperature? Because it's gone down now because it's not doing that flashing. See, the power consumption is way less. This pin changing thing seems to be quite a painful process. Taking its time. Anyway, at least we've proven you can boot. We've kind of proven you can boot off the Thunderbolt, which is exciting. I don't know how that is useful at the moment, but it's exciting. Look, we got there. It's got lots of stuff installed on it, isn't it? I can't even remember what we'd done on this computer. Oh no, well, on this Windows install. It was for the other computer and I guess it's got everything set up ready to go. The crystal disk mark. If you mark our disk though, we probably have to install the Thunderbolt controller properly, don't we? Um, this, it's all dumb Windows 11 stuff. Annoying waste of time that was. Let's just try it and see what happens. So this will be coming up as a system disk, so it means it won't be. It will have the proper caching turned on, so the performance should be reasonable. Yeah, it's pretty rubbish. Or is that normal for Thunderbolt? <laughs> it says there that the motherboard comes preloaded with a LAN driver, helping you connect to the internet quickly. So I guess they've realised that problem that Windows doesn't have the built-in drivers for the 2.5 gigabits port so that will sort it out should we install this or not that armory crate thing it's confusing because it seems like it can do drivers but then when we looked at it before it didn't seem to be able to do drivers anyway we'll just leave this benchmarking finish and then it'll come back and decide what to do ah yes we're going to benchmark two drives aren't we true two drives together that's really really hot it needs a thinking thing on it. Okay, while we're waiting for the benchmark to complete, the display driver must have got installed because now it's popped up to native resolution. And it looks like also some Windows updates are done. The hard disk light's still flashing a lot. I rested a heatsink on there because the, the drive's getting burning hot. But we can see there the but the the CPU though, nice and cold. Presumably that's its temperature, 34, 30 that's pretty good power consumption yeah, jumping around so we can see there the performance of the drive while connected over the Thunderbolt is pretty good for reading that's about as much as you're ever going to get out of Thunderbolt or USB 4 let's check the power delivery ability of the Thunderbolt port we'll plug into the other one with a 100 watt capable cable and then we'll join a uh, the Thunderbolt 3, oh yeah, it's the US, the PD 3.1 trigger, we'll see what this can do, nothing, yeah, okay, it looks like it just, it can't do any power delivery, disappointing, yeah, okay, well, that's that then, no power delivery on the Thunderbolt ports, which is interesting and surprising because the Thunderbolt EX4 add-on card for the other motherboards, that has power delivery 100 watts, and I thought it was a requirement of the Thunderbolt specification that it support power delivery of a certain amount to have that USB 4 specification. I don't know. Anyway, we'll try the front port. I've plugged in the adapter for that. We'll see what that says. It says PD3, 9 volts, 15 volts, so 45 watts. 20 volts, 60 watts. Oh, okay, so on the front USB 3 port, or USB-C port, you can get 20 volts, 60 watts out of it. There you go. 
So it does support 20 volts up to 60 watts. So that's 3 point something amps, is it? We'll just load that a little bit just for fun. There you go, that's 15 watts coming out on this load bank. Probably not a good idea on this tiny little load bank to put too much. So that's encouraging, that means we can power the dock thing. Let's test that out. Because what we need to do next is connect up a... I'm going to try connecting this at the same time to the other Thunderbolt port and see if we can get that to do stuff with a benchmark it. So is the Thunderbolt driver even installed on this? It is. Okay. There you go. Whether or not that just installed itself or... Yes, that's a Tamless module in that thing there, which is a, yeah, Thunderbolt thing. Tamless. Yes, it's a, a module thing you can buy and it does all the stuff for you. Yeah, awesome. Presumably that's all up to date and good. We didn't actually install anything, did we? Do we get this? I don't know. It's gonna ruin the... Uh, we won't get it for now. Hey, yeah, so it hasn't installed any of the stuff. So that's good. And so it just pretends it's connected by the normal way. Right, we're gonna try connecting this drive up. To do that, we're gonna have to introduce a SATA power adapter. The power supply is pretty hot. I guess that's what happens when there's no airflow in it. And we're gonna try it in this adapter first. And if that doesn't work, we'll try a different one. Of course, we cannot interfere with that one at the moment because we booted off of it. So I wonder if the Windows licensing will work because we booted this drive which was activated on another system and it seems to be just activated here. Does that mean if we fresh install now on this system it will be activated again? Just mint, all happy and good going on there. Let's see, will this come up? Oh yeah, look at that. The wave link thing. Oh wow, look at that. It came up with the drive. The only problem is I can't get to the mouse anymore because it's hidden under this. So I guess we could have booted over that one. Alright then, with that in mind, we should try this. So we should have more drives now. Yeah, is that 7 terabytes there on H? So if we do read those both at the same time and see what we get. Now oh, that's disappointing. We only got half the speed. Does that mean the CPU only has one Thunderbolt controller in it? Yeah, that's not what we wanted. When we checked the 11th generation computer, the uh, whatever they called that thing, the GPD Win 21, 22, whatever version it was. This thing here, which we tested in a video a long time ago, which has both Thunderbolt controllers enabled, even though the ports are only on one controller, it has two Thunderbolt controllers enabled in the CPU, and that means, well, that appears to mean that it can dynamically re whatever that you get full bandwidth on both ports. But we see now that the um, the things happened. Look at that, that right is way better. So maybe uh, maybe this adapter that it's connected to at the moment, this thing, isn't that good for reads? This one's not very good for writes. Anyway, if we tested this by itself, test this one by itself, will that give a better result? Yeah, see that's more what we were looking for, isn't it? 2.8 yeah, so is this drive, the one that we're testing right now, would give closer to 7 gigabytes when it's running on a PCIe Gen 4 connector. Okay, we'll try that again. I wonder if maybe we should do it more times, like 8 times, so that they take longer and it will average uh, over a longer period of time. So they're both there going hard. Said that one light. Flashes a lot more on that upper one than that lower one. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it is sharing the bandwidth. Because, yeah, that one had finished, and then that made that one speed up. It's not a very good way of testing. Oh well, that's disappointing. It seems like it's got a, mo a maximum total bandwidth limitation. Thought we'd moved past that.
Probably said that's disappointing about ten times now. Yeah, but it is. It's not what we had asked for. All right, there you go. Uh, I think that's that's us. Awesome. That we've done. We built a system. Worked, which is nice. Nice when it works. And we booted off of Thunderbolt, which is quite exciting. And we proved that Thunderbolt controller is disappointing because it's not acting as two controllers like I expected it would have. Does that mean they they must have reduced the number of Thunderbolt controllers in the... Or is it only the mobile processors that have two Thunderbolt controllers in them? I don't know, I'll have to go and research that. Now I've worked out what the problem is now. It seems that desktop CPUs don't have Thunderbolt controllers in them. Or they're there, but they're just permanently disabled which is a bit disappointing and not what I was expecting because we look on this computer, the GPD, you can see there that there are two Thunderbolt controllers in it and both have two ports and when you plug devices into it it looks like they're coming up under the same controller but they still get access to full bandwidth whereas on this computer they must have had, they must have put a Thunderbolt controller chip in there and I'm guessing that's why so few motherboards have Thunderbolt I was thinking they just didn't want to bring out the lanes from the CPU but it seems more like they don't want to go to the expense of adding a Thunderbolt controller to the motherboard which is really disappointing so maybe I should have stuck with mobile platforms and um, what I wanted to look at was uh, so on this thing this Thunderbolt generation is quite different to what you see on on this computer which shows Thunderbolt 4 9A1B and it shows NVM firmware version 41 where it actually says 38 on what's supposed to be a newer system application version is the same driver version is a little bit different so yeah, I don't know what to think about that. I guess that's just what happens. It's a disappointing revelation that there's no Thunderbolt. Why am I so obsessed with Thunderbolt anyway? Because I want to join the capture card and a dock up by the Thunderbolt to make this computer out of the way and then have an easy way of connecting my devices. So when it's time to do video recording or streaming, I just want to join it all with one Thunderbolt cable to turn on and connect up the capture, the audio and cameras and other bits and pieces because having them plugged in all the time it uses quite a lot of power I've noticed like an extra 20 watts of stuff would be needed so it would be nice to only connect those by Thunderbolt so I'm gonna have to test now will, will the Thunderbolt will the capture card work on the Thunderbolt on this motherboard and if that doesn't work then maybe I'll be selling this and changing it's something else because it doesn't work on the Thunderbolt EX4 add-in card on the previous system I built which was the main motivation for getting this one thinking that it would bring out the built-in Thunderbolt but yeah that doesn't exist so I'm gonna try the capture card in this system and we'll see what happens well it turns out it's no good I tried the capture card in the Thunderbolt enclosure is where I want it to be so that I can connect it only when it's needed and not have it to waste power so it uses about 15 watts all of the time but it doesn't work same as it didn't work in the 12th gen system which was the whole point of buying this one was to get one that had integrated Thunderbolt because that had been successful in the past on laptops where this worked fine connected to several different laptops with Thunderbolt but it doesn't work with this when you connect it it comes up as installed and working fine comes up in OBS but the screen is either just black or green and you cannot, can't get any picture, you can't even get the test pattern which comes up when there's no signal connected so I don't know yeah so I'm not sure why the Thunderbolt on these new systems doesn't work I assumed it was because it needed the built-in CPU Thunderbolt but then one of the laptops I have doesn't have that either so there must be something wrong and I don't know what that is 
So there you go, that's 13th gen system, which seems like I bought it for no reason because it didn't do what I wanted it for. Awesome.